Hi, this is Ben and I'm doing my Palace Inquisition. My first home game was October 1986 and I went with a mate and his dad who were Spurs fans, so I don't know why they were going to Palace, but I tagged along. Um, Portsmouth at home, we won 2-0, stood in the Holmesdale end. I remember walking up the Homesdale Road, walking up the back of the Homesdale Terrace and then looking down onto the pitch with the floodlights and that was it, I was hooked. So 1986, Palace 2, Portsmouth 0. First kit was the following season, so 87-88. Red and blue, classic stripes with the collar. Um, I think it was Admiral or Bucked Up. No, no it was Admiral. And we were sponsored by Andrew Copeland Solicitors. So 87, 88, Andrew Copeland, uh, Admiral kit. Favourite kit, easy. 96, 97, red and white stripe Adidas kit, sponsored by TDK. I still don't think we've even got near it. I uh, quite like the Bacta Tudic kit uh, when Armstrong was playing in it. But for me, um, definitely the TDK Adidas kit. Most memorable goal. We've very fortunate seen a few belters, both at Sedlers Park and away, mostly against us. Um, people seem to score welders against Palace, but mine's a bit odd, only because I travelled up there, got set back in a coach before we even got into the city. It was uh, Nottingham Forest, so I think it's 88, 89, Carl no doubt tell me differently it was Forest 2 Palace 2 Ian Wright scored a volley went 1-0 up um, they equalised and then took the lead and it had seconds to go seconds Mark Crossley just wildly cleared the ball um, landed out by the halfway line for a little bit in to John Solarco who in turn just smashed it straight back over Crossley's head for a 2-2 draw so it's a 45 yarder lob over Mark Crossley for 2-2. Um, we lost the replay. But um, fantastic goal. Very privileged to have been there and saw it. Most memorable game. We've, in our recent history as Palace fans, we've never had it so good, really. You know, there's ne excitement's never, you know, far away from us. So playoff finals, FA Cup finals, relegation, you know, Hillsborough, Stockport, um, beating Watford, beating Sheffield United, beating Liverpool, Christian Ball, finally beating Arsenal. But for me, because uh, of the time and the gap between playing them before that and the hype, it was Steve Koppel coming back to Sellers Park with his Brighton team. They had Bobby Zamora, who was, you know, being touted as the next big thing. But they rocked up to Sellers and we absolutely spanked them. 5-0, Andy Johnson, who went came to Palace as part of Morrison going off to Birmingham, scores a hat-trick, and we were on top of the whole game. Absolutely fantastic. So, Palace 5, Brighton 0. Favourite player? I've made a short list. So, I'll do it in reverse order, down to number one. So, number five, Michael Hughes. Absolute warrior. Must have been horrible to play against him. Great captain, great Palace player. Um, yeah, absolutely loved him. Number four, Andy Gray. Again, I kind of go for these warrior type midfielders. He was a hard man. Could pass the ball. He had a shot like a thunderbolt. Great personality as well. Loves Palace still to this day. Um, but yeah, Andy Gray. Number three... Nigel Martin, fantastic goalkeeper, terrible moustache, but fantastic goalkeeper. Uh, came with a lot of hype, most expensive keeper at the time, was a million pound from Bristol City. Um, came from Cornwall originally, St Blasey, which is not too far up the road. Um, fantastic keeper, fantastic times. Number two, Wilf, don't need any further explanation, the, the man's a wizard. Um, not going anywhere this season, um, he says. This, all the superlatives have been said about him. He's got the thing that gets me with Wilfred, he's just still so underrated by other fans. 
and that's why we love him. He's just too good for them. So it takes me to number one. Just spoke about him, Andy Johnson. Lovely bloke, great forward, scored some brilliant goals for us. We got relegated. He gave us another season to try and get us back up. Just just everything that epitomises what modern football isn't about anymore. Loyalty, passion, still loves the club and I thought he was a fantastic player. So number one, favourite player, Andy Johnson. Where do I think Palace will finish? Since Carl, John and Nick did their videos, we've signed two more players, uh, Kyote and Maya. We'd already signed Giata, who thinks a great signing. I don't think he's going to start season I think they're going to carry on one thing Roy Hodgson does is consistency and drills he drills and drills again so I think he'll start with Hennessy until Gaeta settles down in training and in England you know he doesn't speak any English at the minute so I think that'll be a transition from Hennessy to Gaeta Maya and Kyoto both fantastic signings. If you look at the money West Ham have spent bringing players in, and they've let Kyoto go for just under ten million, big, powerful, strong box-to-box midfielder, um, excellent signing. I think he's lost his way at West Ham, but who hasn't lost their way at West Ham? The only people that don't get lost at West Ham are the fans when they're streaming out the stadium because they're losing. Um, I think Mayer, potentially, I don't know loads about him, I'm not, you know, can profess to be a, a German football expert, but reading reports about him and the way fans from other clubs around Europe, not just England, are reacting to us signing him, makes it a very exciting signing. Um, I think we've got two or three more to come. Two, definitely. Three, possibly, more than likely. Um, the fact that Wilf is going nowhere... Wolf's going nowhere. Um, Nick spoke to him in Coulsdon. I think stalking might be another word, but he spoke to him in Coulsdon. Wolf said, I'm not going anywhere. I don't know where the stories have come from, which we do. They've come from his agent because that's football. But I don't think we're going to lose Wolf. I think we've got him for one more season, so let's enjoy him. Looking at all the other players around the club, you know, barring another injury crisis, we've got Wickham coming back. Uh, Dan... He's probably, I think he's going to be the second string centre-back. We can't have another injury crisis like last year. Going forward, I think we're going to be a, a handful for anyone. Very solid base at the back. So, all things considered, looking at the teams that have come up, apart from the Portuguese national team that Wolves are assembling, nothing to worry about the teams coming up. I think Burnley are going to struggle, juggling Europe and the Premier League with the size of their squad. They're not really tearing up trees I don't they've got the money to do so I think no one's got the money to do anything at the minute in the Premier League the prices are astronomical so again that makes Kyoto a fantastic signing for the money we've got him on um, so I am going to say between 17th and 11th is just a, a lottery really everyone's around the same level but I think by Christmas we kind of have an idea where we're going to be Always looking over our shoulder, but more looking forwards than backwards. And by March, we'll be safe and enjoying some free-flowing Brazilian-style football. So, all things considered, I am going to predict we finish 12th. So, that is me. That is my Palace Inquisition. <laughs>